everyone let's talk about tetanus prophylaxis whenever a patient comes to emergency department you have to consider whether you give tetanus drugs or not and this decision should be decided by two main things first what is the type of the wound that patient suffered from is it a clean wound is it a tetanus prone wound or it is high risk tetanus prone wound and the second thing is that the vaccination status of the patient. Uh, you ask the family, the parents of the patient, or the patient himself. So, what are the types of what are the tetanus prone wounds uh, that you consider? First, if there is a puncture type injury, this puncture type injury happened in a contaminated environment that likely contain tetanus spore. Example, a gardening injury. Number two, if there is wound is containing foreign bodies. Number three, compound fractures. Number four, wound is or badness and the patient is systemically unwell and having systemic sepsis. Number, uh, and also certain animal bites and scratches. Although <clears throat> smaller domestic animals, domestic pets at home, and they are not in the garden, they, they should not contain tetanus spores, but there are some, anim uh, some animals that are rotting in soil or live in an ag agricultural setting, they are at high risk of, uh, of transmitting tetanus to you. What we mean by high risk tetanus prone wound? Any of the above wounds that we discuss it, and also if the patient is having a heavy contamination with a material likely contain a tetanus, for example, manure. So the patient is contaminated with this, is having high risk. A wound is or badness that show extensive devitalized tissue. So these devitalized tissues, which are extensive, make the patient prone to high risk tetanus. And number three, wounds or badness that require surgical intervention, example requiring suturing, but delayed more than, more than six hours. Uh, they are high risk even if the contamination was initially um, simple. So th this is an example of manure and this is an example of soil. So if the patient is exposed to a wound in these areas, uh, they are liable for high risk tetanus. So the vaccination status, usually the schedule of the tetanus is a priming course. The patient received at two, three, and four months of age. Then they receive tetanus vaccine booster at three years and also at 14 years. Usually, this dose is skipped by most people. And when you give a vaccine, it protects you for up to 10 years. So, for a patient who is aged, uh, who received the last vaccine at three years and completed the priming course, they are protected for up to 13 years. So, so when they come before 13 years, you don't give any vaccination. That's why most children, when they are properly vaccinated in Iraq or in Kurdistan, they don't need vaccination. <coughs> they don't need immunoglobulin, even if it is a tetanus prone or high risk tetanus prone wound. Another issue is that tetanus immunoglobulin. The tetanus immunoglobulin that you give is usually 250 units if less than 24 hours. If more than 24 hour delayed or very heavy contamination, you may give 500 units. Um, this schedule summarizes what we talked about. So you consider the wound and the immunization status for a patient. So if a patient is up to date in vaccination and received the last dose before 10 years, before 10 years, so if the patient no need to give the vaccine or immunoglobulin, whatever type of wound, you don't give. If the patient not up to date or receive it, receive it a last dose more than 10 years, 
For example, a child received a vaccine at three years and he is now 15 years and have a wound. If it's a clean wound, don't give anything. If it's a tetanus prone wound, don't give immunoglobulin, just give vaccine or send the patient for the healthcare centers to complete their vaccination schedule. And if the patient is high risk tetanus prone, then you give immunoglobulin and the vaccine. Coming to a patient who is no, not receiving the not received priming course or not immunized, not certain, or born before 1961 where there was no program for tetanus vaccine, if the patient is having clean wound, you have to advise them to go to healthcare center to, the, to receive vaccine for the next wound is to protect them. If the patient is tetanus prone or high risk, then they should receive both immunoglobulin and the vaccine. So this is the immunoglobulin that's available in our hospital. As we said, if it is done uh, 24 hours, the patient should receive only 250 units. But if the patient having more than 48 hours, 24 hours, they have to receive two ampules. And thank you.